All right, recently I scraped all of Crunchbase and then gave those 2.8 million records away for free on Twitter. And I just wanted to show really the results of that as well as how to scrape Crunchbase, how I did it. So first, the results of this. So this is the tweet that I put out. I just scraped 2.8 million companies from Crunchbase, comment, and I'll send it to you. And that got half a million impressions. So decently well, uh, but then the response to them was even better. So they DM me and they wanted me to take it down. And I said, um, y'all can go pound sand. So screenshotted that, tweeted it out. And then that got a little bit more than the last one. And then the replies are really funny, uh, levels, um, Twitter OG followed me from it. Yeah, Balls of Steel. Um, yeah, hilarious replies also. So I just want to go over how I did it. And then, yeah, a bunch of core sales. And then I got 5,000 followers from those two tweets, basically. So I was like at 9,000 or 10,000 and then shot up immediately to 5,000 or uh, 15,000. So giving away stuff really works. And uh, yeah, so this is exactly how you would do it if um, you wanted to do it yourself. So you're gonna search for Crunchbase sitemap and then this is it. This is the entire sitemap. So the sitemap is to help Google know how to crawl them. And then, so we're, you know, basically like Google, we're crawling, scraping. Um, so that's all you would have to do to get all the stuff. So you can see that you have all of these organizations here and they're .xml.gz, it's like a zipped uh, file, but basically there's more that exist there, but there's just so many that they have to put these in other uh, files or folders. Yeah, because there's so many of these accounts. So you can see that there's all of these, you know, organization, organization, organizations, like so many. It's almost like 72. And then, I mean, I haven't even scraped like people and stuff, but you still have all of that that you could do too. So let me show you what happens if we go to this um, URL so they don't like automatically download so that you can see that. Uh, let's check it out on VS Code. So we have to like undo it. Oh crap, we don't want to airdrop. We're downloading it and then we're gonna open with VS Code. So then you can see all of the URLs right here. Oh, that's the image. We don't want that right here. So these loc, whatever that is. Boom. So let's see if we can go. Yeah, boom. So then we have, we have all of these that we can go to and scrape. So if we click on this, then it's going to take us, yeah, there. Let's go incognito though. Boom. So this is exactly what we're looking for. And then we can scrape anything public that is here, which, yeah, still has some pretty good data, you know, location, number of employees, categories, like or industries, digital entertainment, music, found a date. Uh, we have their website. Yeah. Um, whatever this is. We have some of their financials and people. Um, to give you a really good example, let's do um, like Shopify. Yeah, you can see all of this great information, like their uh, stock symbol, you know, investments, rounds, whatever. And then even if we drill into the JSON, you get even more info, like the SEMrush info or whatever. So if we inspect, we go to all, and then we want to see um, the raw HTML that is returned. Yeah, boom. So then you can see all this nice JSON. So that's exactly what we want to parse as well. We don't want to um, grab the HTML and then parse it. We just want to grab the uh, JSON. So let's see, SEMrush. Da, 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 da. Right, so you have SEMrush summary, you have the global rank and visits last month. 
So stuff that's not even exposed on the front end, but we can get in the HTML. So that's also obviously pretty valuable there as well. Um, we have all that stuff. Yeah. And then other information in here that could be valuable, but I think that's one of the more interesting things is the SEMrush. Um, but next, so we want to scrape all of these, but if you try to, they have really, really strong protection on it. So what we want to do to get around that easily or easier is we want to scrape the cached version that Google has. So Google exposes, thank God, not in all instances, but in some, will expose um, the entire HTML of the version of the site or of the page that they scraped. So how we get that is we go to this address and then you just append the URL. So we go here and then the URL is right here. We want to paste that. Boom. How crazy is that? So this is the cached version of the page that they crawled or scraped. And then you can see this on other pages. This one, it's harder to see. You can see this is a little messed up. Um, let's see. But we want to see exactly when it was last scraped. And yeah, boom. So this is Google's cache of this page. It is a snapshot that appeared on September 12th, currently September 20th. So this can obviously vary. It's not necessarily the most up to date, as you can see here, it's eight days ago. But for this, not a lot of information is going to be changing, you know, in a week or two or whatever. So very comfortable scraping this because it has um, just, yeah, good enough data for us. We don't need real time. So yeah, that's how you'll get around the blocking that they have when you wanna scrape the pages. So then to put it all together, uh, and by the way, this is in my web scraping course, uh, the ultimate web scraping course and check out. So I have the code as well as even more in depth about how to do this. So if you want the code uh, all of this code. So I go over how to scrape Instagram, Twitter, you know, all this good stuff right here. Then grab a copy of the course. There's a code that'll be in the description to give you 25% off. But yeah, so if we start this whole thing off, then you want to get the sitemaps first. So that's really easy. Da -da 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 -da. And then we're going to return all of the URLs. Then we're going to go through all of those. This is the hardest Part that I had right here because of the blocking that they have when you try to go to those .gz pages, .gz um, .xml. But for that, we are just going to use got scraping to get those. And I don't even think I use a proxy here, which is interesting. But yeah, this is the code if you're interested. And it imports, yeah, a bunch of this stuff, which is yeah, which is a little crazy. Um, so yeah, that's how we're gonna get. And then this thing will put a file, will download a file locally for us. So then we have to read that, convert yeah, XML to JSON. So you have the file name. I think I get rid of that file name somewhere. Hmm. Maybe I don't, I should have. Anyway, so then, yeah, all we're going to do is just loop through all of the um, org URLs. And for some reason, I only do 10 at a time, which is interesting. I should have done like 100. And we're going to scrape the organization page, which is the exact thing that I showed you before. We're going to use smart proxy to proxy our request. And then we're going to scrape the Google cache thing. And then it's really, really easy to grab the JSON. We're just going to get the ng state with a Cheerio JSON parse. And that's it. And then just grab the JSON that you want. You know, I stored it in Superbase, and that's it. So if you want to do the same thing, then uh, that's how you would scrape all of Crunchbase. And anything else that has a sitemap like that, you can scrape. So it's a great example. Um, another great example is like PitchBook. So if you have PitchBook sitemap, then it is like right here, I think. And uh, that's next on the list to scrape because then it tells you exactly how to get all of their data, so hope that helps.